What's up everyone, welcome to today's video, welcome to the Video Game Fight School channel, thank you very much for tuning in. So Gotham Knights Heroic Assault is uh, probably two and a half weeks away from the time you're watching this video. The biggest question I think on the minds of a lot of people is probably going to be the content of the Heroic Assault player mode itself. Now, this is something that I'm certain that a lot of people probably already have a guess or an educated hypothesis regarding, but... At the end of the day, when you look at some of the different elements that we've been paying very close attention to, examples, some of the U asset files that were actually left in the game that seem to show characters like Two-Face and Starro, I think it's one of those things where a lot of people are under the impression that we're probably going to be having some kind of a raid mode that this particular gameplay is going to you know, present. Now, the fun thing with a mode like Heroic Assault is it's actually been done in different games and different setups. Now, one thing I usually talk about a lot in this community is how the Division and the Division 2, actually the Division 2 more is close to Gotham Knights than many other games in its structure. And this is not something that is outlandish, nor is it something that's out of the question. In fact, I strongly believe that a lot of what the Division did with its open world and continuous game system is what inspired a lot of Gotham Knights open world and continual system where you can continue going out there and fighting crime and beating bad guys in a loop that gets you know fun and doesn't ever get tiring as long as you're enjoying the game using the different characters that all provide you different means and methods of playing and so this is what i think heroic assault is going to do it's going to expand one aspect of this game that i think is really central to what gotham knights has done over every other game a very unappreciated aspect and that is the co-op side of things you see, a lot of other video games usually will play their multiplayer in competitive and maybe sometimes co-op modes, but this game has really emphasized a lot of that superhero fantasy where multiple superheroes are going into a situation and they're going to take out bad guys. They also took the time to make sure that you're not limited to what kind of superhero you could use. So if you and your friends all want to go in as four Red Hood players or four Batgirl players, there is no limitation to that compared to, say, maybe other games like, say, Suicide Squad, where Stephen Hill has mentioned that you're only going to be able to use one squad member at a time in a given setting. I think that's probably what we concluded after taking a listen to all of what he talked about at the DC Fandom event regarding the game. So Heroic Assault, in my opinion, seems to me like it's going to be something where a lot of players are going to have something to go back to the game for. Because right now, a lot of people have come in, they've spent their time playing the game, they've burned a multitude of hours. Believe it me, I'm going on almost 90 hours on the game, and I'm only on my second playthrough. The only thing I have to do left in that game right now is fight the boss, and I'm at 87 hours on PC. That's insane. I haven't even looked at my, play, uh, my Xbox progress, which probably is going to also add to that and push me over the 100-hour mark overall playing Gotham Knights. And I haven't even beaten the game more than once on one platform so you think about this and you consider you know other people too who might also be in a position where they've already beaten the game once or twice and their goal is just to wait for the next set of content i think heroic assault is going to be that very important glue that holds this entire game and its premise together i see a lot of our audience members and even a lot of our people in the community talking about the game and for most of them they're just waiting for the heroic assault mode right now to come out so when we think about the contents, when we think about the structure, you have to go to, say, a mode that is in Tom Clancy's The Division 2 that's actually called The Summit. This is actually a 100 floor challenge where you and three other players can actually go on those floors and fight bad guys. You can set the difficulty. You can set parameters. You can do all kinds of different fun stuff. And you can actually select because The Division 2 is very emphatic on its gear game. You can select what kind of gear you want the enemies to be dropping for you or for each individual player this is a mode that actually really did uh, a good job in resonating with the community especially in the end game side of things so i think what heroic assault is going to do is it's going to provide this loop where players are going back and forth playing this one mode and then it's going to provide the developers enough time to fine tune their dlc strategy they may or may not already have their dlc in place ready to go or at least in development right now and so heroic assault to me seems like it's going to be number one a huge draw for people who already have the game and have already beaten the game number two it's going to be another huge draw for people who may be telling their friends or their peers hey this is a fun game and we should be able to play together because a lot of people bought gotham knights to play with peers and friends and even family i mean it's one of those really cool things 
And so I think this is a very important mode in this game. And to me, I think building their entire game around this is going to be very interesting. At first, I wasn't really certain about a lot of the co-op aspects of the game. But as the game has released and starting to see the way a lot of people are appreciating a lot of the co-op side of things, man, I think this is actually a really huge part. And for those of you who actually you know, pointed this out to me, I really appreciate you guys in this community because what you did was you went ahead and you made sure to point out to me that one of the more enjoyable sides of this game to you is actually the fact that you can play with other people. It really takes this game into the comic realm very fast because of a lot of the way the stories are told surrounding these characters in a family setting. And I think that really does highlight a lot of this game. It would have been really weird if this was like a single player game and then that was just the end of it. But adding the co-op side, I think seemed to be very, very important for the overall project. It's a shame that the game probably got the most unfair treatment that I've ever seen a video game get. But I think eventually, the game is eventually gonna be recognized and appreciated for a good uh, setup that it actually is as time goes on. Let me hear your thoughts in the comment section. Thanks so much for watching the video. I really appreciate you guys' time and audience, and hopefully we can talk pretty soon in another one. Peace out.